Then they'll grow up, they lose that yolk sac, and they become smolts, but then there's only about 50 left. What happens to the between 3,000 and 50? Lots of things. Frogs, people. Darwin. Hardwired Darwinism. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome or welcome back to Living in the Pacific Northwest with Halbert. I'm Halbert. And I'm JB. And today we are have a little bit of a treat for you. We're taking you behind the scenes of one of our some very special client events. Yes, and um, we like to say, you know, by working with, with us, by working with Hal, um, you don't just get a home, you get a community. And that's something that um, is kind of really near and dear to us. As you guys may or may not know, when we moved up to the Pacific Northwest a little over five years ago, we didn't have any friends or family in this area. So uh, we were uh, kind of learning as we went, made some really great friends along the way, but we know how it is when you move into a new area and we wanted to basically be able to introduce clients, introduce them to new experiences that we've kind of fallen in love with. And uh, this trip is definitely one of them. So. We're going to be taking you guys along to the Bonneville Dam Visitor Center mm -hmm. in uh, beautiful North Bonneville, Washington. And then we are going to be ending by going to Sugar Pine Drive-In, which is one of my favorite sort of hidden gem restaurants in the Portland metro area. Yeah, and uh, Bonneville is definitely on our short list of things. Anytime we have a visitor or friend, family come to visit, it's on a short list of things to, to show off because it's such an, uh, it's an amazing engineering feat. It's, basically where uh, they dam up the Columbia River, uh -huh. how they generate, we found out, they generate electricity for not just Washington and Oregon, but for 17 states, electricity is generated out of this facility, along with uh, fish ladders and just all kinds of engineering feats to uh, address the concerns of damming up a river the size of the Columbia. So this event is a perfect example of what Jarrett was just saying about getting a community. We have our client field trips that we do several times a year. We have annual events that we are starting to implement that are becoming a bit of our tradition in our community. And we like to do new and fun and exciting things and give you a way to not only just do something for those of us who are introverts. You know, it is still good to get out of the house and socialize. It's good for us as much as we want to be um, at home and in our own space. Uh, I think that getting out is such a, a good thing, but you also get to meet people who are like-minded. Um, I have clients from all different backgrounds, but there are is a lot of overlap and a lot of connection. So I love seeing some of my clients like Kevin, who his video, we'll link it here. Uh, has met several of my clients and now when he's having his um, parties at his condo he's inviting several of my um, past clients and friends to his events and so we just really want to make it a community and make it more than just oh we're going to sell you a house when you move here or we're going to sell your house when you're moving away from here or you know to or within the Portland metro area um, but make it something that's so much more and just really fulfilling and deep connections and that's one of the things we like to do is create community with our community. Yeah, and at this event, we had uh, almost 40 clients and friends and friends of the clients out to this event uh, to experience this. And, and what was the, probably one of the coolest things for me about the day, because we had been there before. I, I, I love going there. Uh, but one of the coolest things for me was, ex was sharing the experience with uh, so many people. I think with the exception of maybe three, four, five people there, it was everyone else's first time experiencing the Columbia, or excuse me, the Bonneville Dam. Again, we're excited to make this a, a regular ongoing occurrence. So since Bonneville Sugar Pine Trip, we've since had another one at Old World Apples. I'll tease that video. I'll look for that recap video coming up shortly. And when it's finished, it'll be linked here. Nice. So we hope you enjoy this video where you get to see one of our exclusive client events. If you want to be invited to the next one, if you happen to be visiting or are planning on being a future client of ours or we're friends, you know, we would love to be able to invite you out. It's not just for people who bought and sold with us, but it's also for people who are thinking about working with us and our friends and family in the area. So if you are thinking about making a move 
to or within the Portland metro area in Southwest Washington, I would be happy to help you. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in the Pacific Northwest, make sure to shoot me a text at 360-818-4438. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel, give this video a like and a comment. And my Zoom link is in the description below. That's one of the best ways to get in touch with me along with text or call. So I'm looking forward to connecting with all of you, even if you're just considering a move here. I'm happy to chat with you. I feel like when we lo relocated here, people weren't really willing to give us the time of day. And so that's a big priority of ours is to make sure that we can uh, communicate with people because you deserve to get answers, especially on, on such a big move. So uh, with that being said, let's jump on over to North Bonneville, Washington. Hope you enjoy this video. So we'll wrap up and we'll start our tour. We're gonna to get a, like a little self, a little uh, VIP no. tour. Oh yeah, we're getting a VIP <laughs> tour. <laughs> so you can normally come and get a self tour. And for those of you guys who are from out of state, this is a really great place to take people. Um, when you're like, where do I take my family that comes to visit? This side and the Oregon side are really great places to take people. Um, you won't be able to do quite the tour that we're doing because you need a group for it. Um, but we're actually gonna to get to go down on the floor of the turbine, so. Be really cool. So if you have a cell phone needs charging, you know, bring that between the two different buildings. It's got weight rated about 200 pounds, so we're fine. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all right, so if you look either on the upside or on the lower side, you'll notice there's a big water difference. It's a 60 foot water difference. That is almost always consistent. We're what's called a run of the river dam. We don't store water. We don't really have a way to store water behind us. So everything that comes down, we have to let through one way or the other. The majority of the way this time of year is all through fish passage. So most of our water is was, or was for fish passage. We're actually starting to transition. September 1st, we start switching over to more power generation. So you won't see the spillway open very often. The spillway is open to allow smolt passage from the baby guys coming down river, uh, heading back through the dam. That is a, pr a major way that they travel. Another way that they'll travel is through these tubes off to your right. There's these big black tubes down there. Those are called a small bypass chute. So there's something like a screen that, uh, it's like a conveyor belt screen that tries to keep uh, debris and baby fish from going through our powerhouse and going through the turbine blades. It's not a great way for them to go because it's a big spinning blade. Um, it's not a death sentence. And when we get downstairs, I'll talk a little bit more about how that works. So if you look through these windows here, this is how the magic happens out here. Each of these generators can produce up to 13,800 volts of electricity at one time, which sounds like a lot. Anybody know how many volts it takes to charge an average cell phone? Five, give or take. So if you plug your cell phone straight into one of these guys, you don't have a cell phone anymore. That plan. Or a hand or an arm. Jared. That plan. <laughs> All right, what's crazier is 13,800 volts. When we put it up into the, into the air and it's going through the power lines up above, we bump it up to 115,000 to 230,000 volts. So that's what's traveling through these lines. That's a lot of electricity. If we were to bump that straight into your house, you wouldn't have a house anymore either. So a lot of places have these waters called step-down transformers. So you've seen these all over the place. There are buildings where the big uh, lines run into, and then it breaks it off into smaller units, and it goes out to your house, and then it breaks it even to a smaller unit on a telephone pole that runs into your house, and then you can actually plug in your house and use our electricity. What's the craziest thing that you've collected out of the reactor? A boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a Native American maybe forgot to tie his uncle's boat off well enough. 
and it was floating around in here. So that, of course, put us into panic mode because we don't know. Was it unoccupied? Was there, is there somebody still in it? Is there somebody in the water? So we actually, we have boats that we can send out and it, it's a process. Uh, but yeah, that one was not, not awesome. Uh, we actually had a boat go through our powerhouse once. Uh, turns out it came out in basketball sized pieces on the other side. Yeah. So didn't hurt the turbine blade at all. Um, and I'll explain a little bit how that works downstairs too. The question. How is it the water level right now? Is it like normal? Is it high low? Yeah, we're, we're floating right around our average. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Is there anybody not capable of about 60 feet of stairs going down other than the stroller person? It may take a minute. That's fine. Hey, we will not have to go back up, I promise. I guess it wasn't meant to be. It's basically depicting a salmon's experience from the ocean all the way back to its native spawning grounds and all the things that it might see along the way. Really kind of cool. I do. Go for it. Could you tell us the, I think I heard one time, my wife gives me a hard time about it, but is it true that they spawn upriver, they swim to the ocean, they go, kind of go around the ocean and then back and, and die? And spawn Correct. And die? Yep. And they will go to the exact same spot that they spawned at. And how long of a journey are we talking? It depends on the species, but anywhere from about three to seven years. Wow. I don't need a navigator, no. Water. GPS. So they're following a high flow of water and there's a scent in the water from where they were born at. Mm. And so that's what they're tracking all the way back. Mm. Um, so we will intentionally, like today, when you looked at the powerhouse, if anybody was paying really close attention, you'll notice that it was the outer generators that were turned on, not the middle ones. And the reason for that is we have a higher flow of water going where the, uh, the fish ladders are. And so that draws the fish. So they're headed for the, the path of most resistance which is kind of counterintuitive. Like, why would they work harder? But if you're a salmon and you're swimming and all of a sudden the water gets really slow and you're not even close to your home, uh-oh, you're going into a pond, you're going into somewhere there's not a good water flow, that's bad for a salmon. So they're actually looking for more current. Mm -hmm. So we actually keep the outer edge um, generators running when the salmon are coming up for that purpose. Wow. Yeah, yes. So you mentioned coho, and coho is a type of salmon? Yeah, so, so we've got... This, which ones are the salmon? So we've got five different species of salmon here in the Northwest. Um, and the cool way to remember it is always by, by holding up one hand. And you got thumb, which rhymes with chum. So we got chum salmon. 
We have pointer, which is poke your eye, sock eye. You got the biggest one, which is the king salmon or the Chinook salmon. You've got the ring finger, which sometimes you have a silver ring on and a nickname for a silver is coho. And then you got pinky, which is for the pink salmon. We only see the three species. We don't see chum and pinks in here very often or at all. Um, but the other three do come through. Um, and then of course, steelhead and then several other things. There was a bunch of bass hanging out this window down here. Um, but I don't see them right now. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you had a good time. Um, I will be back in that front office for a while if anybody has any follow-up questions or anything. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your time here. And you have anything? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Thank you, Lee. Go back to you later. <laughs> Uh, if you are coming to Sugar Pine, they have food and ice cream. You can order food online. So when you're in the car, just with the two of you, I would recommend doing that because it is lunchtime on a Sunday, so they'll probably be busy. But they do know we're coming. Um, you can't order ice cream online. <laughs> but they said it will go pretty fast. Um, so it is 12.30, 11 11.30. So you hang out, watch the fish for a little bit. Um, Show of hands, who enjoyed themselves? <laughs> Not looking back, eyes on the freeway, Bonnie and Clyde, a classic cliche, we're on the run, this is what we waited for.